So let's say that you're the kind of person who takes their computer security very seriously. You already took the steps to switch to Linux to be more secure, and maybe you took it a step further by using a minimalist distro like Arch Linux and Gentoo to avoid any type of software sprawl problems, you know, having applications on your distro that you don't really use, and they end up getting out of date, maybe getting some vulnerabilities in them, and you don't want that. And more importantly, you just started choosing more minimal more secure alternatives to programs that are more commonly used. But the software that you directly interface with, it might be very, very secure, but have you ever thought about the dependencies? There's a lot of trust that we put into different package dependencies and libraries. Usually we would just use pip or npm to install these dependencies from you know, some random program that we downloaded on GitHub without really thinking about it. The developer just told us to run that. But whenever you do this, you are downloading code from the developers of the dependencies, which oftentimes are not the same person that's developing the actual package that you're gonna be using and you're essentially blindly trusting them. And what's even worse is that these dependencies are going to be used to build other packages as well. So if you successfully infect the dependency, you could end up infecting all packages that are built with it and end up hacking every machine that ends up downloading that package before the malware is actually caught. Now, there's a number of ways that this can be pulled off. One is by typo squatting, which um, usually is used to get people to go to malicious websites. Like, uh, you know, let's say for example, I'm trying to go to youtube.com, but I type in yotube.com by accident. Uh, so this is a website that somebody owns. Um, and then here is where I ended up instead. So it looks like uh, in this case, this is some sort of a website that is redirecting people to uh, different, you know, other sites with an affiliate link to, I guess, try and make some money. Uh, well, this one actually doesn't look like an affiliate link, but if you type that in, for example, it's gonna just take you to like random sites where you can buy stuff from. But you get the idea. You basically type something in wrong by mistake and you end up at a completely different place. And the same idea can be applied to dependency names. Uh, in fact, it'll work anytime you do something that fetches information from the web that could have different results due to a typo. So uh, let's say, for example, that I wanted to install NumPy on my computer, but I did a pip install numpy instead. Um, so easy mistake to make if you've never actually seen numpy written out, it's n-u-m, n-u-m-p-y by the way. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. This is an easy mistake to make and I just went ahead and downloaded a different package uh, that I didn't actually want. So we'll go ahead and uninstall that now because I'm not actually sure what that's for. So yeah, easy mistake that anybody can make, and this is something that has been majorly exploited. So uh, this article goes over all of the details about it, and of course I'm going to leave this in the description below. Um, so basically, Alex Bursan, I think that's how you pronounce his name, he was able to hack companies like Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, and PayPal because their software was using a mix of public and private packages as dependencies. Uh, so the name of several of the private packages, they didn't appear in already registered like public NPM registries at the time. So you know, basically, you can just go ahead and create it if you want to. And so then the question was, if you create a public repository that's matching one of those private ones and you just put whatever you want in it, you know, it could be hello world, it could be malicious code, it could be surveillance video of Epstein in prison, doesn't really matter, but will that public repository get prioritized over the private one and then is it going to download the new code and then is it going to be executed by the program that is using that dependency? And more importantly, will any of the security systems that we have in place to to try and prevent something like this, would it even catch that this happened? Uh, and the answers are the worst that they could possibly be. Yes, the code will be run, and no, there's not a whole lot that you can do uh, to prevent this once it has already happened. We'll get into some ways that you can prevent it uh, in the end of the video, but if this is already something that's going underway, it's uh, kind of hard to fix it. 
And it's not just a JavaScript thing either. Uh, it's not just an NPM thing. It's possible with Python's pip install and Ruby's gem install as well. And what's particularly funny about this is really it's more likely to affect a bigger company because bigger companies are more likely to have internal proprietary dependencies. Um, so it's really just a matter of figuring out the name of those packages and those often get exposed in public JavaScript and JSON files as well. I mean, if you're a big company that's got thousands of people working for you, I guess there's just a higher chance that that kind of stuff is going to get exposed. That's why you'll notice if you read this article that most of these are like Fortune 500 companies. Uh, yeah, and then of course he used DNS exfiltration to be able to get some data out of these networks uh, without being blocked by the firewalls because there's really nothing that they can do to stop something like that. Now, luckily, the guy who was able to pull off these different hacks, he did the nice thing and he reported the issue to Microsoft. He was uh, basically doing like a pen test for these different companies and collecting bug bounties, stuff like that. So he wasn't, uh, you know, maliciously taking advantage of it. And most of the companies were nice enough to pay him the bug bounty. Apple paid up 30K for this guy's services. Uh, so good stuff there. Uh, now, like I said, there's a number of ways to protect your own projects from having this happen to them if you are actually using private repositories because the obvious thing to do is to use public repositories um, so that way you don't even have to worry about this in the first place because you don't control the code there. Uh, although it is useful to look at the source code of software that you are using, including the dependencies from time to time, at least if you understand it, because that's how open source code goes. You know, somebody has to audit it. Uh, it is still possible if nobody pays attention for malware to make it into open source software. But anyways, ways that you can avoid this, pub this private repository issue. First is that you want to reference just one private feed instead of multiple ones because the whole reason that this happened is because of the fact that most package managers, they query all package feeds that are listed in the local config file without any regard for ordering them or sorting them. Uh, you also want to protect your private packages with scopes and use those scopes when installing packages with NPM. So this could prevent the whole public package duplication that I talked about earlier because it's going to look for that package uh, internally instead of looking for it externally somewhere. Uh, you can also specify specific versions of the internal packages that you're going to be using. And this could prevent something like an upgrade attack by somebody trying to copy that package, but then give it a slightly higher version number, which might cause your package manager to automatically install that new one instead, thinking that it's an update. And finally, try not to have those internal package names revealed in the first place. Uh, sanitize your public facing code to make sure that it is revealing as few internal variables or structures of your internal code as possible. Uh, but again, that's really kind of a given for any public facing application.